Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Tarahimara boas are a wonderful Mexican dwarf boa that's recently seen a surge in popularity. Today I want to show you guys some of the Tarahimara mountain boas from my collection of different ages, as well as discussing my 2023 breeding plans for these animals. So I've gotten quite a few requests lately to show the Tarahimara boas, so I thought I'd show you guys in this video. And these Tarahimara boas have gotten really popular over the last few years. I remember six, seven years ago, they were just not very popular. Uh, but the last couple years, the prices have just gone way up. The supply has gone way down. And just people really want them because they have a lot of really desirable characteristics as far as a pet. And these animals are the smallest type of locality boa. This is actually an adult female. And she's maybe four feet long, maybe not even four feet long. She's uh, about six years old. She had her first litter last year. She's taken the year off from breeding. She was actually born here in 2017. These animals live in mountains in northern Mexico within 100 miles or so of the U.S. border. So they're one of the more, most northerly types of boa constrictors. They're technically not boa constrictors. I, they're technically of the species Boa Sigma after the reclassification a few years ago, but they used to be classified as a type of boa constrictor imperator, which is why they're considered under the whole group of boa constrictors, although technically the species is not still boa constrictor. These animals, um, in addition to the small size, have this beautiful dark coloration. And I think people kind of dismiss them because they look like they were just dark, uninteresting boas. But they, in addition to the dark colors, they have all kinds of interesting shades of pink, green, uh, even some reds and oranges in there. They just have these really beautiful, subtle colors. Um, they're also really enjoyable to keep. They're very mellow boa. They don't really move a lot. You can take them out and they're not gonna try to get away. Um, but they do move around and explore. So it's not like they just sit there like some other types of snakes. And they're just a really enjoyable species to work with. And much like the Argentine boa, which is another dark boa that has gotten really, really popular the last decade or so, these guys surged in popularity last year. I get all kinds of requests for you know, you're going to have Tarahimara boas. Unfortunately, they have a relatively small reproductive capacity. The litters are anywhere from about half a dozen to maybe a dozen and a half. Um, this female had a first litter. I think it was about six animals, six babies. I have to go back and check the records, but not a huge litter. And you wouldn't expect a small boa to be able to pump out this huge litter, so it's not surprising. Um, but there's also relatively few people working with them, so there's just not a lot to go around, and hence the demand has gone way up, the supply is really low, so the price did go up. I do have a pairing this year, fingers crossed, I'm not sure if it's going to take yet. The female doesn't quite look gravid yet, but might just need another month or so. So fingers crossed on some more of these. Um, but this female, she'll probably breed again next year and hopefully have a slightly larger litter than she had for her first litter. But it's not unusual for the first litter to be a little bit smaller. Um, and now, actually, I'll show you one of her babies. I did hold back one of her babies as a future breeder. I'll have to show that to you later in the video. Here's another one of my Tarahumar breeders. This guy is a 2018 baby, a year younger than the female I just showed you. And he's actually a half sibling to the female I showed you. Same father, different mother. His mother actually has a lot of pink colors and she's a little bit lighter than my other animals. Uh, and I actually, I selected this guy. He was the, the lightest and the pinkest of the litter. Uh, he's actually in shed right now, so he's looking a little dull, but hopefully you can appreciate the pink colors. He's also got this really cool circle pattern down his back. And Tarhumar typically have more saddles than most other boas, something like 25 saddles. So he's got around 25 of these really nicely shaped symmetrical circles down his back, a really beautiful looking animal. This guy is also about full size. He's even smaller than that female. I'd say maybe about three and a half feet. 
So anybody that thinks these boa constrictors are giant snakes, it's just simply not the case. This guy is the size of, you know, a milk snake or not even as big as a ball python, really. Just a, uh, I would ne definitely not call this a giant snake, not even a large snake. Just kind of a medium sized snake. So anybody can keep this animal. These, they don't take up a whole lot of space. The care is really undemanding. Uh, they're really docile to handle and just a really enjoyable type of boa to work with. Mexican boas in general and Tarhimar specifically have this reputation for being a little hissy as babies and typically they do hiss a lot as babies but it's just a bluff. In fact if I have a cage or a, you know a tank of hissing babies if I stick my hand in they don't even really strike. Sometimes they might kind of strike kind of half uh, heartedly but I've never actually been bitten by one because it's all just a bluff. It's kind of comical. You know, but if you don't know this and if a yeah, hissing snake scares you, it might be something that, uh, you know, is going to scare you. But, but once you know it's just a bluff, it should be no problem. And these animals typically will always calm down with a few regular handlings and the adults are, you know, quite docile. Um, about the only time you'll get bitten, of course, if you may, is if you make a feeding mistake and, you know, dip your hand in a mouse cage and stick it in with the snakes. They're going to smell the mouse and no bite at you but uh, just definitely not an aggressive animal so um, this guy actually bred for me last year not with the female I just showed you with one of my other females and um, he's probably gonna breed again next year not exactly sure what my plans are but uh, we'll have to see but just a really nice dwarf Tarhumara mountain boa from Mexico this is a litter mate actually of the male I just showed you, another 2018 born animal. This is a female and she's not quite as pink, a little darker looking, but just a really beautiful animal. You can see all the pink on her belly and that circle back. And then she's got these beautiful head markings, which these tar humara boas are known for. And typically they'll have the dark head markings. Sometimes, but not always, there'll be kind of like a cross marking between the eyes. This one you can see the cross marking. Sometimes it's incomplete, but they just have the kind of a half cross marking, something like that. Um, and this female has never been bred. This year she probably could have been bred. I just wanted to give her another year. I'd say she's about full size, maybe about four feet long. But uh, possibly next year she'll be bred just depending on you know what the lineup is going to be. Not quite sure when I'm going to breed until the fall before the breeding season. Uh, but you know I'm lucky to have a lot of really nice tar humara boas that I held back as future breeders and you know hope to perpetuate these animals and continue breeding them for quite some time to come. Here's another proven male breeder. This guy was born here in 2017 and this guy has the Beautiful dark colors. You can see the dark head markings. I think he actually might be going into shed also, so he's a little dull today. But uh, this guy is a little bit bigger than the other male, but uh, certainly not a large snake, maybe four feet long. And quite docile, quite easy to manage. So these animals, because they're smaller, they don't need quite the same size enclosures as some of the larger boas. And I found they do really well in these tubs. These are the Vision Boa tubs. They're 30 by 40 inches by about 11 inches deep. And that seems to be a really good size for the adult Tarahumara boas. You can certainly put it in a larger enclosure if you so desire. If you want to put like a naturalistic vivarium, something like that. But they're not really all that active. So they mostly just sit in their enclosure. They don't move around a whole lot. They climb a little bit, not quite as much as some of the other boas. Um, but they're really a, just a not very demanding type of boa to work with, which is great for the boa keeper. You know, there's a lot of boas that are kind of difficult in their husbandry, but Torhimar is not one of them. It's just a great species to work with. So this guy is a proven breeder, bred the first time last year. And, uh, Actually, I'll show you one of his babies right now. Finally, I wanted to show you a baby, and this is actually a holdback from my 2022 uh, animals. And the only female, the only Tara Humara I held back, she's a female. 
she's actually um, from the the first female I showed you and the male that I just showed you are the parents of this animal and you can see she's a little bit lighter they do darken up a bit as they get bigger but you can see the beautiful colors and the beautiful pattern just great great animals to work with she's not even hissing anymore you know so the babies as I mentioned sometimes hiss a bit but it's mostly just comical they don't actually do any damage and you know one thing that I should note is that um, the babies I've had never had any issues getting them feeding as you know opposed to some of the other dwarf boas like the hog island and the, the quality are sometimes tricky to get feeding I always start them on live uh, fuzzy mice and um, I've never had any issues with getting tar humara to eat frozen thawed eventually but sometimes they don't do it until they're about a year or so and this female who's now what, about seven eight months old she's been kind of hit or miss with the frozen thawed you know sometimes I'll offer a frozen thawed and she'll eat it sometimes uh, you know I'll go back and it's still in there she drops it and I have to pick it up and dangle it in front of her again and go through the whole process sometimes two or three times so sometimes I just relent and use a live mouse but uh, I've never had any issues with once they're about a year or old or so getting them eating on the uh, frozen thaw and they're really not very picky animals the husbandry is really straightforward because they're from a more temperate climate in northern Mexico at a high elevation they're not nearly as fragile as some of the other boas like the two red tails and the husbandry conditions don't have to be nearly as precise just a great animal to work with and I think a boa that any boa lover would really be happy with is the Tari Maraboa, which I can't recommend too much. So I hope you looked, enjoyed looking at these Tari Maraboas. I hope to have more in a few months, so stay tuned to the channel. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them below or reach out to me. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your boas.